2004. I wonder what it'll bring. Same amount of misery as 2003, 2002 and 2001, probably. You may have a pleasant surprise. I might die. Oh, Mother! Blanche. What? I'm only saying, oh, I don't delude myself. I know for a fact that if I drop dead tomorrow, she'd have a spring in her step for the rest of the year. That is an awful thing to say. And you've been saying awful things for the past few days. And why? Because I'm doing what you should be doing. Oh, and what should I be doing? Everything you can to make sure that Tracy keeps that baby. Oh, don't you care who brings your grandchild up? Don't you dare, dare accuse me of not caring. You weren't here. I begged Tracy, begged her to let us, me, bring that baby up. I did all I could. And it wasn't enough. You gave up, like you always give up on things. I've got more staying power. Oh, you've got more money, you mean. You can afford to buy Tracy a house and I can't. And I never will be able to, now will I? Because any money I might have had coming to me when you do die... Deirdre. Well, there won't be any now, will there? Because she's blown it all on buying Tracy a house. Tracy must keep that baby. Oh, and buying her a house is going to change her mind, is it? <laughs> is this the first sign of dementia? Blanche, I'm sure you've acted with the best of intentions, but you must see how hurt Deirdre is. She took you in when you needed a home. We welcomed you, looked after you. Since when have I needed looking after? And I pay me way. You can't say I don't. I've always paid me way. I've made certain of that. There are many who would expect their daughter to look after them out of love. But my daughter is only interested in me money. Betty's coming round for her dinner. That should cover the cost of feeding her. Now you're being stupid. Take it. I don't want it. Yes, you do. You've been saying so ever since you found out about number seven. Here, take the lot. I never had you down as a money grabber, Deirdre. Just shows how wrong I've been all these years. Hiya, Betty. Happy New Year. I doubt it will be somehow. They never really are. I'm going away. Oh. You what? I need to get away. What for good? Just a few weeks. I can't think straight. I need some space. I thought I'd pack my bags and head to Scotland, be on my own for a bit. I could do a little break as well. <laughs> I don't like the idea of you wandering around brooding. You've got to get back in routine as quick as possible. It worked for me. You've got to show Kieran that you've made the right decision, that you're in control. It's not about Kieran. Betty, love. Yeah, yeah. Could you give us a minute? Do you mind? Uh, no, no. I'll, uh, I'll be up in my room. Kieran's not been getting at you, has he? Because if he has, it's because he's embarrassed that you jilted him in front of all those people. Just keep telling yourself you've done the right thing. I know I did. It's not about Kieran. It's about Dev. Oh, love. I need to get away. <sighs> sort myself out. I can't think straight with Kieran on one end of the street and Dev on the other. I need air. You're still in love with Dev, aren't you? Dev's got Maya now. Shelley's such a... Oh, love. <laughs> oh. It's frightening, isn't it? All these empty days just waiting to be written on. I'd rather be at this end of the year looking forward than at the other end looking back. Yeah, well, whichever way you look at it, it's still another year. I'm going to be 27 this year. Oh, Ken's going to be 65. I'm going to be going to bed with an old-age pensioner. Ew. Ah, there we are. Right, that's the lot. I should keep you going till you get yourself sorted. Thanks. You're not, you're not angry with me, are you, over this house business? No, not you. Just your gran. To tell you the truth, I'm quite pleased. It's nice to know you're going to be just down the street. All this living in each other's pockets, it's not good, is it? Uh, not really. Maybe this way we won't fall out so much. Maybe. Right, I better shift me stuff. Not that there's much to shift. Ah, uh, there's a couple of old chairs in the attic. I'll get Ken to bring them round. They'll keep you going till you manage to buy new. Thanks, man. For everything. Nothing to thank me for. <laughs> See, your gram you should be thanking. You've been there for me. Where else would I be? I'm your mother. 
I do love you, you know. Even if you don't make it easy for me sometimes. Kids, eh? You'd have them. Right! That's Chesney dealt with. It's New Year's Day. You can't lock him in his room on New Year's Day. I can, and I have. Then with my chocolate liqueurs, if he wants to get drunk, he can spend his pocket money on shandy like other kids. Uh, what pocket money? You don't give him any. Oh, sure up and read his moustache for your head. No, go and get your own paper. Will you listen here? It's meant to be season of goodwill, you know. Oh, well, shall I run upstairs and tell Chesney that through the keyhole? Uh, ain't you finished yet? Don't mind her, love. I'll tell you your future. Plenty of action with your own stud and your own pub before Easter. How'd you work that one out? Stands to reason. Once Fred Elliott sees you running rings around that shelly, he'll sack her and you'll be managing the Rovers. Uh, what's this about the Rovers? I'm trying to persuade your mum to work there. I'm thinking about it. I've only just finished at the arms. I'm enjoying being between jobs. You always have. She was in between jobs for four years once. You should get straight back at it. Back behind the bar. Before you get rusty and forget the tricks of the trade. Not me, love. I never get rusty at anything. Shelley looking after you all right? Oh, yes, but, uh, well, it's not home, is it? <laughs> oh, that's how I feel. About this house. It used to be my home. Not anymore. Oh, for goodness sake! How can you sit there comparing yourself to Betty? She just practically lost everything. With you, you've dusted off your savings book and bought a house. And speaking of homes, this used to be my home before you descended, criticising me and butting in where you're not wanted. Oh, you've said it now. Did you hear that, Betty? My own daughter doesn't want me. I'm in the way. She's just waiting for me to die. There you go again, twisting what I say. See that, Betty? See that spark of anger? That's what I live with. And why is she angry? Well, I wouldn't know. I'll tell you why. Because she can't wait to get her hands on the small pittance that I've scrimped and saved for all my life. Pittance? You've just bought a house. And if you want to see a pittance, try having a look at my savings book. Well, it's your fault. You should have married Ken when he asked you to. Then this house would have been half yours. It is half dear, is when I die, it'll be hers outright. See? She's planning Ken's death now as well. Oh, I don't think so. I don't have to listen to this. It's true what they say, Betty. Yeah. Nobody wants you when you're old. <laughs> Jen, Jen, is this working? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So, how many promises have you got in your auction then, Fred? Enough. You're putting a promise in yourself. Does it involve sausages? I'm auctioneer, I don't make promises. <laughs> You're like me then. Only promises I make these days are ones I know I can keep. <laughs> and boy, can I keep them. Look, I've been thinking. Now that you're free and single, there's nothing to stop us meeting up from time to time, is there? Yeah, there is. <clears throat> Why? Because of Sunita. She doesn't need to know. She didn't find out last time, did she? No one need know it could be our little secret. I don't want to have little secrets with you, Bev. Look, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the time we had together, but it was a one-off. I see. Not something you want to repeat, then? I'm sorry, no. Well, now we know where we stand. I just wanted you to know, I completely understand if you don't want to keep the job open for me. Of course, I'll keep the job open for you. What are we talking about? Two weeks? Three? Something like that. Mm. No, I'll give Todd some extra shifts. The boy's always banging on about um, needing more money, right? Thanks. I just need to get away. <clears throat> From me? <laughs> From everything. Well, the job, the flat, they'll be here for you. Made a right mess of everything, I'm to. Oh, you'd have made a right mess if you'd married him. I thought it's what I wanted. To find a man of my choice and marry him. This is the second marriage I've run away from. How many more chances am I going to get? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be speaking to you like this. No. no I want us to talk. Just... Dev. I can't do this. 
I'm sorry. So, ladies, we've had our first promise from out of here. He will make your knob shine and clear all your nukes and crannies. Smut! Now then, who's going to open the bidding? 50p. 50p? Do I hear a pound? A pound. Come on, ladies, a whole spring clean, top to bottom. I'll even use my extendable feather dust. Hey! Ah, ah, and hey, now that's worth more than a pound. But it's all for charity. It's a very good cause. All right, then, two pounds. <laughs> and advance on too quick. Five pounds. Seven. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Seven, and advance on seven. There we go. Cheers, mate. Now, Pay for his budge up and make room for Tyro. Right Bit of a squeeze, in it? Nice and cosy. Go on then, ten quid. Twelve. Are we done at twelve then? That's once, that's twice. Going, going, gone. Sold to Blanche for twelve pounds. Shall I send him round to number one tomorrow? Oh no, I want him cleaning number seven for Tracy. Plenty to do. Deirdre does all the cleaning at number one. Well, if you can call it that. All she really does is push the dust around. Betty? Oh, hello, Tracy, love. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm just sitting, having a little think. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be sat out here on your own. Well, I've nowhere else to go, have I? I'm meant to be stopping at the Rovers, but I've, I'm feeling the way. No. I'm sorry. I mean, I've been sat out just brooding. I mean, I feel like that sometimes. Normally, when I'm at home on my own, you know, I'm sitting and watching the news and seeing the terrible things that people do to one another. I feel sad for a little while and then I, I pull myself together. It makes you realise, you know, that there's a lot worse off than yourself. Only at this moment, I'd, I don't think that's true. Oh, Tracy, I feel so I can't get much lower. Hey, well, what about your son? Well, he doesn't want me. Well, if he did, his wife certainly doesn't. But it's my own fault. How can that be your fault? Well, I wasn't married to his father. And the day he was born, I, I gave him to my sister. She couldn't have children of her own, you see. And it seemed the best thing all round, but... Oh, Tracy, I can't tell you what it was like seeing him growing up and not knowing who I really was. I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean that. So when did he find out the truth? Well, when he was in his 20s, but... Don't listen to me, love. Betty, people keep telling me that I'm going to regret giving my baby away. What do you think? Oh, love, there's not a day goes by that I don't regret doing what I did. I'll just have to bear it until the day I die. 30 quid for a date with Jason Grimshaw. Are you adult or what? <laughs> Uh, my promise is, is very simple. Oh, a bit like you, then. <laughs> I'll take your address book and copy out the addresses of everyone you normally send a birthday or anniversary card to, uh, and then two days before the birthday, I'll turn up on your doorstep with a greetings card uh, chosen by myself, all written out and ready to post. <laughs> all you have to do is sign it. <laughs> Right then, ladies, that's a way to your mind. Well, what if we don't like the card you've chosen? Well, well, you will, because I have impeccable taste. Right, who'll start the bidding? Uh, come on, ladies. Go on, then, a pound. Oh, give me five Right, Bessie, pounds. you go and sit with your friends and I'll get you a drink. A what would you like? Um, um, a port and lemon, out. please, love. Thank you. It's quite my good deed for the year, yeah. <laughs> I have a pound. Do I hear five from anyone? Three. Two. Hi, can I have a cotton lemon and a glass of dry wine, please? Yeah, come on. Go in, go in, gone. So, Teresa, for a rotten pound. 
I'm sorry it's only a pound, Emily. Every little helps. Is she more your type, is she? Don't be like that, Beth. I'll be either I want to be. Go on, go and chat up the little old wrecker. You're well suited. Cheers, love. I can't remember if I kissed you or not last night. Well, in that case, you didn't. Because if you'd kiss me, to remember. Our next promise Is that so? Anyway, I was too busy kissing someone else. And even better known. Who was that? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Mr. Leslie Batters me. Look at her. <laughs> Laughing and drinking as if she hadn't got a care in the world. Don't let it get to you, love. Look, OK, so she's bypassed you in favour of Tracy, but it's not like she's giving all the money to a dog's home or some oh, toy boy she just met. It was Tracy. Anything you want me to do? I'll do. What? Anything? Just say the word. Hey, Scylla, did you know about this? It was my idea. None of this lot will bid, so I'll win and then he'll be my slave for a whole day. I'll not let him out at bedroom. Ah, uh, do I get five pounds? <laughs> You'll be lucky. Five pounds. Yes. Seven pound and thirty pence. Go on, Sarah, put an eye a bid in. I can't. I can't afford to. I thought I'd get in for a fiver. Do I in advance on seven pound and thirty p? Come on, ladies, you know you want me. Fred, <laughs> Fred, come on, bang your hammer down. <laughs> you are not paying for less batters, me. Have you seen the look on that Silla's face? It is worth every penny. <laughs> Go at once. Betty, are you all right, love? Oh, yes. Any yeah. advance, any advance? You know, any time that you're feeling down, you we want you to come across the street and we can kick our shoes off and watch an old yeah, film together. Off. Thanks, Rita. Daughter Janice for £7.30B. Yes. What's her game? That's what I want to know. She probably just wants to boss him around. No, there's more to it than that. She's got a nasty evil mind, she has. You don't even know her. I know enough. I know what led her put up with. The man's a saint. Oh. Can't put a smile back on his face. Excuse me, love. Are you looking to take on behind bar? Why do you ask? I've just finished at Weatherfield Arms. And seeing as I'm living down the street, I thought I'd give you first refusal. Well, pop in tomorrow, I'll have a chat, eh? When I'm less busy, all right? I'll do that. Go on, baby. Now we have Stephen MacDonald. Uh, he owns streetcar taxi firm, and and he's got he's going. Uh, he's tell him what you're going to do. <coughs> I'm um, I'm uh, offering my sh chauffeuring services for a night out in Manchester. I will uh, drive you in style uh, wherever you want to go. So who's going to sell the bidding then? Five pounds. And if I win, Betty, that's you and me out for the night. Oh, fancy. Ten pounds. I've always fancied having a chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> fifty. Fifty? Any advance on fifty? Bev? No, not me, love. Do I hear sixty from anybody? Uh, sixty. Oh. You're going to pay for your own fiancé's services? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you paid for less, didn't you? Besides... Quite like Steve's services. <laughs> 70. 80. 100. 110. 120. 130. 140. 150. <laughs> Tracy, what are you doing? Just thought I'd uh, raise some serious money for Auntie Emily's hospital. It's all yours, Karen. Soldier Karen, my dollar for one of them. Well, that's the end of the problem. I would like to thank you all for... What was that, Oliver? Well, I just said. I was just trying to raise some money for Auntie Emily. Feeling charitable tonight. Listen, that person that you kissed last night, I wouldn't be any chance to be Stephen McDonald, would I? What if it was? Well, that depends on what kind of kiss it was. One that I meant. You're serious. Listen, if I tell you something, right, you promise that you won't tell anyone. Go on. I think that I love him. You think? No, I don't think it. I know it. And before you laugh, this isn't a recent thing. I've known him for years. I used to have this massive crush on him when we were kids. And there, well, there it is. I love him. I paid 150 quid. Yeah, I had to. Look, I'm not about to let anybody make a fool out of you. Ah, oh, sure job, isn't it? 150 quid, man. She's a caution, your granddaughter. Oh, she's always been unpredictable. 
doesn't matter where are you. I mean, having just given her a house, if she's that unpredictable, she might just sell it. Oh, I'm not that daft. I bought the house for her, but it's in my name. It's my house. Oh, that's good. Did I just hear you say that it's your house? Oh, there she goes, listening in to other people's conversations, ears flapping. But I thought you bought it for Tracy. Oh, that's right. But it's my name on the deeds. So what's it all about, then? This this grand gesture of giving Tracy a house? You've given her nothing. Yes, I have. I've given her independence. Besides, when I die, it goes to her. I'm making sure of that. Oh, I'll bet you are. Anything to get at me, eh? God, this is all just a big game to you, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you something. I'm glad you've bought number seven. I'm glad Tracy's going to get a proper start, because I know how hard it is not to have one. Yes, I I'm glad you bought that house. Good. I'm glad you're glad. And shall I tell you why I'm glad? Oh, please do. We're all listening. I'm glad, because it gives me a chance to say this. Pack your bags, Mother. You what? Pack your bags. You own a house. You don't need to live in mine anymore.